Good morning, Oklahoma, and welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week, we continue in our series of building back better with replacement heifers, and specifically how to get the genotype in those heifers that we want. And we've addressed in the past, genotype really has two components. There's the part of it we think of as breeding value, which is based on additive genetic potential of animals. And then that other type, gene combination value, which we'll talk about next week. So selection really should be based on the breeding value of animals. What is breeding value? If we are interested in improving a specific trait, we can think about the sum total of the additive genetic impact of all the genes that have got an additive genetic impact on that specific trait. We think about individual genes in the case of breeding value because individual genes are what can be passed on from parent to offspring. So how does this concept work? Well, if we think about improving traits through selection, improving traits based on breeding value and selecting animals that have got the best breeding value for the traits of interest, traits fundamentally fall into three categories. Reproductive traits are low inheritability. Uh, heritability is the concept of how much a phenotypic variation we can explain as a result of additive genetic variation. So when we talk about reproductive traits and say they're generally less than 20% heritability, that means only less than 20% of the variation we see in whether or not a heifer ends up bred or open after that first breeding season is due to additive genetic impact. Growth traits are moderately heritable. They fall somewhere typically between 20 and 40% levels of heritability. Carcass traits are highly heritable. Most of the estimates in literature tell us that traits like marbling, ribeye size, fat thickness are over 40% in heritability. So, as we think about the concept of heritability, the amount of phenotypic variation that we can explain as a result of additive genetic variation, I'll throw a quick example at you. Uh, the American Angus Association estimates carcass marbling to be 48% heritability. What that tells us is that for all the variation we see in marbling, that 48% of it can be explained due to additive genetic merit. Now, as we think through this and zone into it a little deeper, typically if we've identified the traits we want to improve and think about that next generation of cows, the traits that are highly heritable are what we can impact largely through selection. Traits that are moderately heritable, we can impact to a large extent through selection. Even the traits that have low heritability have got an underlying additive genetic variance that contributes to getting the things that we want. Now, next week we'll talk about gene combination value and how we get that through mating decisions, but we can improve the additive genetic potential for all traits based on heritability through our selection process. A couple of things to remember, selected populations where we have improved additive genetic merit, we have made cumulative and permanent genetic change because those genes are going to continue to have that same additive impact as long as they get passed to the next generation. So that leads us into next week where we talk about improving the other part of genotype. And as always, thanks for joining us this week on Cow Calf Corner.